Hello, Chelsea. Hi, Sam. How are you? <laughs> I'm really, really well, actually. Thanks for having me on. Are you all right? I'm not too bad. Do you know what I find is really awkward? How with Zoom, because you chat to somebody before you record, you have to do <laughs> the whole, how are you, on camera. Double introduction. <laughs> yeah. So, so you know how I am. Um, and of course, the reason I'm chatting to you, Chelsea, is because I have been doing um, one or two Tracy Beaker interviews over the past couple of weeks. It's been mad. The reaction to my Danny Harmer interview when it was announced that she would be returning as Tracy Beaker blew up. And people wanted to find out how other cast members are getting along with their lives now. So that's why I, I have been brought to you and your, your, your fitness page and your social media. Um, so Tracy Beaker, how did this journey begin for you? Um, so literally from the start with the audition and everything. Yes, go for I it. I was, how I like to describe it, the luckiest kid in the world. <laughs> um, I literally um, got a local agent where I am. I, I went to like a Saturday stage school. All my friends, all I ever knew was singing, dancing and acting. That's mm -hmm. all I did as a kid. It's the only hobby I had. And everyone, um, all, my, all my friends, all my buddies went to this local agent. And um, just randomly one day, I, we got this audition through. Um, and I was only nine at the time. And my mum got me on a train and we went up to London and um she was absolutely petrified <laughs> taking me there but she did it bless her and I will forever be grateful um and actually I thought I was auditioning for Tracy literally we got the audition I think um that we got the um kind of call and the the audition I think was like the next day or something it was really kind of bonkers and and so I was quickly getting the Jacqueline Wilson book and reading it through and I was reading it on the train up there and I was like mum I'm definitely nothing like Tracy Beaker. I reckon I'm auditioning for Louise, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, so we got to BBC Studios and kind of really politely just was like, hello, I'm here for the audition for Tracy Beaker. Yeah. <laughs> Not knowing at all what I was doing. And um, yeah, next to my name, it said it said Louise. And I was like, yeah, mum, see, I'm auditioning. So I, d I literally didn't have a clue. Uh, went in the waiting room and um, they gave me a script just to have a little read through. And I just went into a, a room um, and I think it was just at the time, I think it was just the director, um, Susan Tully in, in the room. I think it was. I've got a terrible memory. And this was like 19, 20 years ago. I think it, I think it was. <laughs> I've been chatting to somebody who, who also got auditioned in the same uh, kind of group as you. And they yeah. said it was Susan Tully. And I didn't realise that Susan yeah. Tully was actually in EastEnders. Yeah. Who knew? I was quite starstruck at the time. Yeah. She, she had, she, I think she was in it kind of not too long ago. Like I recognised her when I was nine. So yeah, so I, I just read the script to them and then I remember them saying, I'm just going to get you to do that one more time. I'm just going to get someone else to come in. And I think it was Jane Dauncey, the exec or producer, um, came in. I just did it one more time. And then me and mum just went and enjoyed our day in London and kind of came home. And the reason why I was the luckiest kid ever, I think... Now, obviously, I'm not 100% sure on this, but I think there was a, a, a girl ready to play Louise and um, that they had set. And apparently something like she was going on holiday or she didn't want to cut her hair or there was some kind of weird reason why she pulled out from doing it. Um, so that's why they went to the smaller agents further afield. Um, and basically, I didn't even have a recall because there was two weeks until filming and they were just like, you've got the part. And this was like the next day I came home from school and... Um, and I don't know how mum kept it in in the car, but once once we got in, because I think my dad wanted to see my reaction and everything, and mum was like, Chow, she got it. Yeah. And I think there's this picture of me somewhere of me absolutely like really ugly crying, like yeah. and um, whoever yeah. that whoever that kid was must be I know. himself right now. I'd love I know. to I'd love to interview that kid and be like, should I cut your hair? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, no idea who it is or I mean, it must be, there must be some form of truth to it because like I say, it was really late in the day that they were recasting um, because I think there were workshops between all the other characters um, and they did like, you know, tons of callbacks and recalls and putting everyone together and, and I kind of basically got shoved in last minute and it was just a massive whirlwind, crazy. She doesn't matter now anyway, she doesn't matter, you know, no, she, did, she, she didn't get the wrong. <laughs> Um, and uh, Tracy Beaker it has become this phenomenon. It's particularly uh, well respected in, in my particular age group and generation. I literally remember every single day after school running home, and I only live around the corner, running home uh, to watch Tracy Beaker. And something I only found out recently was that Tracy Beaker was filmed in Cardiff. So oh, wow. all the locations that I loved so much on the television were actually like three rows 
uh, three oh, rows God. away from me. So yeah. it's madness. What was your experience of Cardiff? Um, amazing. So the first series was actually in London. So mm. the first series was in Ealing. Um, and it was an incredible series. And I remember staying with um, a family member who was who was kind of close by. Um, but the second series is kind of, I think, where the first series took off quite well. They, they moved it all to Cardiff. They got this huge house. And they basically put us um, in these um in in all in one hotel all the cast members and it was just epic and we used to stay there monday to friday and then get driven home at weekends um to go back and see family but yeah every every sunday evening i remember turning up at this hotel and basically one one of us um obviously my mum or my dad came with me one of us got put in the penthouse that week and it was like who whose wow. week's it gonna be and then <laughs> And then anyone who was in the penthouse would have a pizza party that week. It was like their turn. <laughs> it's, it's like being put in the secret villa in Love Island or something. <laughs> Jeez, something like that. It's crazy. And then the next, the third series, I only did the first three. They were, they put us in flats, brand new flats, right in the centre of Cardiff, right in the, right in the city centre. Um, so that, I mean, it was great. I mean, obviously, like I said, I was so young. I, I literally didn't have a clue, but the, you know, the different locations of, of where it was all set and, it was just a crazy experience really everyone kind of like just looking and just wondering what the hell's going on why um, do you I think tracy beaker has stood the test of time and is still beloved to this day i cannot tell you i i literally it's it blows my mind that i mean don't get me wrong i don't get recognized anymore but if people kind of find out or you know tag me in something on social media people go crazy for it 19 20 years on and it is crazy and you know if you look back and it's kind of the original series the first kind of few series that mm. are, seem to be like the most kind of popular and they kind of look really dated now as well and you just think because <laughs> obviously it was so long ago i i you know obviously the, the story behind it and the characters and it was kind of quite um it was quite cheeky as well I know a lot of friends kind of weren't allowed to watch it <laughs> really um, yeah there was oh, wow. so many parents that were like against it because it would be teaching them bad behavior and just where like <laughs> you know just general dumping ground fun really so I think it had that kind of element to it as a kid that people almost wanted to be in the dumping ground which sounds really odd yeah um, yeah it's crazy yeah. though not a day goes by where I won't see a gif uh, or a meme of, um, yeah, I think it's the last episode of the first series where they had the party and Peter's yes. just dancing a lot. I, uh, do, do you still keep in contact with any of the cast members who were on the original series or throughout your three year run? Yeah, so I still speak to Danny. I still, she, she actually does quite a lot of my fitness classes, which is amazing. Who's that? I don't know. I've never heard of Danny Harm. <laughs> what, <laughs> yeah. Whatever, whatever happened to her? <laughs> I, I, yeah. yeah. Um, no, she's, she's amazing. I went to her 30th. Um, I think that was last year. Last Feb, I think that was. Went to her 30th, which was lovely. Um, and the guy, Ben, I think you're speaking to him soon. Who plays I am. Yeah. Um, he is one of my best friends on this planet. So really, really strange. He's he's from Wales. Um, yes. Obviously, I knew him during the series, but you know, I think I was eleven and he was sixteen, seventeen. So it was kind of like a brother sister um, thing. And mm. and basically, long story short, he's got some family members that live up the road from me, and he's he ended up moving in with them a few years ago. And I saw a picture on Facebook and recognised the street, and I messaged him like, Ben, what on earth? doing there and he was like i live here now and we were like that's crazy and we've been best buds ever since it's crazy Amazing. yeah that's mad that's mad how you still keep in contact with people who you, you know you essentially grew up with that that is yeah. just incredible yeah. um you know, i love but, keeping up with everyone but um now of course you have uh taken a step into the world of fitness um kind of where did this journey began uh, begin so I think when I was, um, I was quite young, I was only 21. Um, I'd been doing the kind of London audition thing for a few years. Mm. Um, so after Beaker, I kind of went, well, I went to college. Um, it was more musical theatre I kind of went into and then singing. I went to a, a music college. Um, and yeah, I did the audition thing for like four years. Absolutely loved it. And, you know, it's, it's always been a passion of mine and it always will be a passion of mine. But I never tried anything else. I never did anything different. It was the only thing I knew. And I think as well, when you're a bit younger and, you know, just the, the way the universe takes you, you, you kind of just go with the flow a little bit or you follow friends or 
whatever. Um, and I kind of, you know, not got homesick, but just, I'm not particularly a London girl. I like it. I like my home, I like my seaside. I like being close to my family. And I just wanted a bit more stability. You know, it's such yeah. a hard industry. It's such a difficult, and I respect that anyone who's, 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 you know, going, especially during this awful, awful time, it's, yeah, I'm crazy sensitive and to it at the moment because it's, um, yeah, it's really tough for everyone. Mm -hmm. I've obviously still got a lot of friends in that industry. Um, so yeah, so about 21, I kind of came home and I literally didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. I thought, oh my God, I've, you know, I've got a diploma in singing. What am I going to do with that? Mm. Um, <laughs> and as much as I love to sing, it's kind of, you know, either I was doing panto for a few years and then it kind of, it just sticks to my, in my car and in, in the shower now, I think with singing. Yeah. Um, maybe the odd Instagram, if yeah. I'm feeling a bit confident one day. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I, I kind of started up um, some Zumba classes, good old Zumba, just because I was doing them myself. I started obviously going to classes and getting my fitness levels up. And I just thought I could do this, you know, fitness is something I could do. So yeah, fell into it from that really got all my qualifications. Um, and sometimes, I mean, obviously, everything's online at the moment. But I mean, even with online, it kind of feels like a bit of a performance in a way. You know, I do, I like to do one-to-one -one fitness, but I, my passion is definitely the classes and just seeing everyone's faces and just music, energy, vibes, all that kind of thing. Um, and it's just grown from there. Yeah, it's been about eight years I've been teaching now. And yeah, I've gone from kind of working with other companies and building up experience to then building my own brand, which I absolutely love. Um, and just seeing where the world takes me with it. And I suppose uh, now there, there's no better period to, to have a, a fitness instructor, to have a fitness teacher, because lockdown has sadly had uh, a negative effect on some people. Um, you know, it being indoors all the time, people do come for eat and they do kind of pile on the pounds. And uh, how, how uh, well, what advice would you perhaps give to somebody who, who, who has had a negative lockdown where they've eaten a little bit more, put on a little bit of weight. How do they kind of get out of that and get back into this fitness routine? It's not easy if, you know, if your world's kind of been turned upside down and, and a lot of change has happened, mm. uh, you know, change is, is kind of good for us in some ways, um, but it is really, really difficult. Um, and yeah, in a, in a strange way, it, it's kind of made people a bit more health conscious um you know regarding business it, it's actually kind of grown quite a lot since lockdown because i think yeah. people have had a bit more time on their hands been a bit more health conscious and just thought you know what whilst i've got time whilst i'm on furlough or whatever i'm gonna you know get my fitness levels up but like you say that hasn't been the same for everyone and it and it is really really difficult um and you know my my advice and my top tips is always to not be too hard on yourself you know i think when a lot of people set goals and goals are brilliant to have and i always set my, myself goals you know we're all on our own journey at, at different kind of times um but make them realistic and make them enjoyable you know when you, so many people ask me what's the best exercise for this or for that or blah 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 and my honest answer majority of the time is whatever exercise you enjoy the most is the best because that means you're going to be sustainable with it so you're going to continue to keep doing it and that's the most important thing you know there's no point in doing something just for a week or two um but yeah, build it up over, over a period of time. Don't kind of change too much in one go. We've all got enough to deal with at the moment with everything that, yeah, is kind of out of our control. Mm -hmm. So yeah, just be kind to yourself. Be kind to yourself. Lovely words of advice there, Chelsea. Um, thank you very much. I will keep you updated with all the um, latest Tracy Beaker interviews I, I, I am, I am doing. You. Of course, uh, I, I've done uh, yourself, Danny, uh, Kieran Joyce. We've got Ben Hello. coming up, uh, the actress who's playing, who played Dolly. I'm, I'm chatting to her. I'm chatting to Marco this morning. Oh, I'll have the whole dumping ground by the end of the week. Um, Chelsea, <laughs> thank you very much. Amazing. Thank you so much.